really zealous with the 50 for week, for week one. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I forgot to open my mouth. That's okay. <laughs> That's not usually a problem at parties. It's definitely not. Here's the thing. Parties aside, which I've never been to, I've read books about them. We're going to have a real party today because Mr. Jared Feather IFB Pro is going to guide you guys through a workout for the whole back that you can do with just one rack. Do you like backs or racks better? Comment below. In any case, I'm the fuck up out of here because I'm going to be doing my own training, but your boy going to slip into the scene every now and again, like I do. Dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun, dun. What do you think? We'll get Mike out of here so I can talk about what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> so generally squat racks do have this bar here for pull-ups. Um, if they don't, what I would suggest is setting this, make sure you have a lip, don't have a squat rack that doesn't have a lip. Setting these as high as possible, and you can put the bar up there, and you can use that for pull-ups instead, if the squat rack doesn't have this. But since we have one, I'm gonna use the actual parallel bar that is on this beautiful squat rack. But I'm actually doing a horizontal emphasis pull day today. Pull day, not pull, Mike Isertel. Um, <laughs> So because of that, I'm going to do these pull-ups first, and I'm gonna show you guys a good way to warm up for pull-ups without a pull-down uh, pull machine, because obviously for this session, we just have a squat rack. Uh, I have to do pull-ups first, because if I do all my horizontal pulling, I'm not gonna be able to do very many pull-ups at the end of the session. So generally, my session would be most of my horizontal pulling if I'm trying to emphasize the hor horizontal pulls that day, and then I'll do some sort of pull-down or something at the end. Again, doing pull-ups first, because I will get like five if I don't do that. So I'm gonna show you guys a good way to warm up for pull-ups if you don't have the pull-down. Then I'm gonna go into my pull-up sets, and then I'll go into my uh, rowing and stuff like that. So I'm gonna put this parallel bar. Obviously, you probably have something you can stack up here, but again, I'm trying to use as little equipment as possible for you all. This is going to be how I warm up for my pull-ups. My foot's gonna go here. I'm going to kick myself up on the bar and then do eccentrics, basically. So first I'm gonna do a couple dead hangs, uh, stretch the lats out a little bit. Then I will show you how I place my foot up here, kick myself up, and then uh, do eccentrics. Oh my God, the spider webs in this fucking place, guys. First things first, I'm gonna do some dead hangs here. Kind of retract. And I'm gonna do some depression of the scapula. So you can do that as many times as you want. Two or three rounds. And then I'm gonna go into the eccentric pull up. I'll probably only do like two or three of those. Then I'll potentiate with one or two regular pull ups. And then I'll go into my sets. So it really just depends on how warm you feel, or how much warming up you think you need for your pull ups, like the specific warm up. Um, and if you can do regular pull ups. If you can't do regular pull ups, you can stop at eccentric pull-ups where you're kicking yourself up and you lower for a good three to four seconds. So the, you would basically stop at this next part of the warm-up that I'm doing. And that could be your vertical pulling for the day for your pull-ups also. I mean, it's not ideal, but if you have bands for assistance, you could definitely do that. Be safe when you get up here, guys, okay? It's gonna be very scary. I, I'm professional at this. I don't even gotta use sport mode, so. You could probably put this a little lower, so that way you can actually just kind of kick up. <sighs> Again, if you're gonna do this for your final warm-up, you can just do a couple. That'll be your potentiation. For me, that's my last warm-up before I go into my pull-ups, or before I go into my potentiation set for my pull-ups. So if you're doing eccentric pull-ups for this session, that's your final warm-up which is your potentiation set. So you do two or three of those. And then you can go into it next and do sets of seven to 15 or whatever. Another exercise option, Jared's not gonna do this one. He's just gonna show you some other stuff today. Is it's definitely possible. You gotta work the kinks out and get this thing uh, the proper width and everything like that. But you can do a variation of lat prayers with these where basically you swing down and you swing up 
Now you'll have to adjust the height of this thing, but essentially what you can do is it all comes down to foot position, but if you can get some kind of lat prayer function going, especially at a higher angle, then it could be a good thing. Another thing is if you're much stronger, this is a real challenge. So the weaker you are, the higher the bar goes for these sort of lat prayers. If you're very strong, I'm sure shit not this strong. So I'll do a fake demo. But basically, you start off here and you essentially, you're gonna lat pray all the way down and all the way back up, but you'll be leveraged here. So it'd be like this. You come up and you come down. Go down and come up. And big stretch and come up. And if you get all your foot positioning right, it can be intense. It's gonna require a lot of figuring out your foot positioning. It's definitely not ideal. You would prefer this implement actually move, but you can do a lot with that if you put in some time. Ooh. Next one will be a full set, seven to 10. That's really all I'm gonna be able to do. Getting a little heavy post contest, so. Seven to 10 rep range for the pull-ups. And then I will go into my rows and then an inverted row intensity technique. Suck at pull-ups. <laughs> Six it is. <laughs> Ooh, have you got a pump though? That's nice. Next exercise, we're going to be doing the barbell bent over row, going into my horizontal pulling stuff. I'm gonna do just regular bent row from the floor using 45s. You could do all kinds of forms of this. You could stand on the plate for a deficit, just put 25s on to do a 25 bent over row. I'm gonna stick to regular bent rows today. Uh, three sets here as well before I go into the intensity technique, which will be an inverted row, which I'll set up and explain how all that works. But set to 10 to 15, three sets, barbell bent over rows. Yes, I'm outside of the squat rack, but I still buy it. My ass is gonna be in the squat rack and the bar's gonna be out here, okay guys? It's still, still one squat rack, one back attack. There happens to be all this stuff with like isolating the muscle to an excessive degree and not pulling in specific planes and wrapping the elbow around the rib cage. All this overemphasis of really minute, probably not important detail. This workout is actually pro like how I trained for the first probably eight years of my career. I focus very heavily on just doing compound movements, pull-ups, bent rows, deadlifts, shit like that. So when you see all these guys doing super ultra advanced techniques, you should probably be asking yourself how they got there and not what they're doing currently. Because when you're advanced, some of that shit matters. But when you're beginner intermediate stages, this shit works and it's gonna continue to work. And over the course of time, you refine your technique and it works even better as an advanced athlete. So I still am heavily centered around like 75, 80%, mostly heavy compound stuff, throwing isolation shit in there. So if you are doing stuff like this at home and you feel like, oh, I'm so limited on equipment, I'm not gonna get as big as I can, you're gonna get 80% of the way there, I promise. This is, if you can get your technique down and you have access to shit like this, 
you're fine and you're not behind the curve whatsoever. Home gyms are fucking awesome. You can always buy a cable station if you need to, but this stuff's awesome. You learn some stuff in school. Okay. We're in the real world, man. Okay. I agree. This shit is, it's real. <laughs> and you can't think your way out of this one. Uh-huh. No fucking Harry Potter nerd bullshit, bro. This is fucking war. You're combining two, two, <laughs> two separate mentalities. Oh, I got you. You're being a hardcore bro, but like with the ultra advanced, this stuff sucks. Cause the bros would love this shit, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you, you don't love I'm it. I'm smart, bro. You're smart, bro. You're cool though. <laughs> there are two types of downsets that I actually program for clients. One is when they fall out of rep range for the top sets, um, just to stay within a specific rep range. Like I said, 10 to 15. That was nine on set one, so I'm already out of it. <laughs> um, and the other downset is to intentionally reduce load to go into a new rep range for like metabolite sequestration. So if I'm doing seven to 10 at first, and I drop the load by like 20% to get into that 15 to 20 range. So I'm gonna go ahead and do down sets because I fell out of the range. So probably take off like 30 pounds or something. Jared's catching a flight. He's sitting in the waiting area. Like, oh, so I'm working on his computer. They're like, passenger Jared Feather, you've been upgraded to business, business class. Please receive your ticket. He's like, Jared Feather. <laughs> Five minutes later, that's the fucking, the, the stewardess is like, <laughs> all right. Jared Feather, IFBB Pro. He's like, <gasps> oh, close oh, my laptop. <laughs> thanks, ma'am, of course. <laughs> you is. So the next exercise, I'm going to put these bars through here, these little beams. <laughs> I'm gonna place this on top of them. The higher up it is, the easier it is. It's gonna be an inverted row. The lower it is, the harder it is. Because I'm using this as an intensity technique, obviously that's generally machine-based stuff. So I'm going to make it easier because I'm gonna be doing either giant set or my rep sets. I wrote something down, because I'm gonna continue with these sessions since I'm doing them. For week one, I'm gonna continue with these for the rest of this master cycle. Um, so I'm either doing giant sets or my rep sets, I'll come back and tell you. Um, so it's gonna be a little higher. If you're doing this for added work or downset work from your bent over rows, you can put it lower. You could put a weight on you, you could wear a weighted vest, whatever you wanna do. More barbell rows is probably better, but I'm gonna put it about right here and do my inverted rows by placing this barbell over the top. So I'm looked, it's gonna be a giant set, 50 total reps. I'll try to rest as little as possible, kind of like with my push-ups when I do giant sets or push-ups. Giant sets are really an intensity technique where you're kind of trying to increase the reps and not really have to worry about what you're getting per set. You're just making sure by the end you get the total number of reps. But if you wanna add in a little flair, you can reduce the rest periods and that makes it even, even more painful. So I'm gonna probably rest at max 30 seconds between my pauses and try to get 50 total reps on this first week. Next week, we'll go to 55, et cetera. So I'm gonna get to it. Don't really gotta warm up too much. Get a bunch of bent over rowing and pull-ups. So we're ready to go. For me, this is generally an intensity technique I might do with like a seated cable row 
or chest supported flexion row with lighter weight. But I haven't done inverted rows in a long time, so I'm actually getting a really good pump. Oh boy. Probably have a big mid trap pump, huh? Uh, actually my lats are pretty fucking, I'm trying to tuck my elbows a little bit. Kind of been fucking really zealous with the 50 for week, for week one. <laughs> Did it. What, you guys happy? You happy? You got a whole back workout and just one power rack. Good, good. At the expense of my entire mesa cycle. Selfish, if you ask me. Look, a lot of, a lot of you guys train in uh, just like a power rack at home. This yeah. is a, a sweet workout. Yeah. And remember, if you vary grip widths, if you have a couple of different kinds of bars, you vary the heights here, you vary the order of exercises, that's kind of a ton of workouts you can do. In each one of those, you do once, you know, for like six to eight weeks at a time, progress through a couple of mesa cycles. When you stall or it feels not so great, switch some grip widths, switch some bars around, switch some uh, orders of exercises, switch some rep ranges up, and yep. then you just got kind of an infinity amount of work to do in here. Yeah, again, that's literally exactly what I did for the first probably eight years of my training. Heavy compound shit. I really didn't use too many machines. The assisted pull-up's a nice addition if you can get that into your garage gym. Outside of that, I really, heavy compounds were the way to go for me. So you're getting quite a bit of stimulus and you're probably gonna be 80% of their way there with your physique if this is all you have. Hey guys, Jared Feather here. This is a really terrible impersonation. <laughs> No, I know, brother, I know. Okay. Listen, your face. I'm a pro bodybuilder. I'm pro Jared Feather, IFB pro. <laughs> and like you guys think being pro means I get contracts, supplements, people adore me. I get to be on YouTube. I get to have sex with a lot of beautiful bikini pros. That's like not it, man. I mean, yes, all those things are true <laughs> to the letter. But at the end of the day, being pro is a fucking burden, you guys. I, I wouldn't wish it upon my worst fucking enemy. <laughs> 